We're heads up to a flop of 4-3-2 rainbow, a flop top set, and I decide to continue for half putt. He raises to 1.4k. I know he's capable, so I'm not going anywhere just yet. I put in a call. The turn is a six of clubs. He continues on the turn for 2.4k. So I put in a call. On a nine of clubs river, here's the action. Oh, all in oh. moment. Another punt to the all pro punt returner with a flush out there and four to a straight. A little bit more difficult for Jay win here. <clears throat> Yo, winners. All right, so we are back at the log and we're heading off to the big game. The big game is going to be 25-50-100. It's the biggest game that we have this week. It's actually the biggest game that we play. So y'all wish us some run good. Let's get some action in. Yo, it's a monster lineup of all poker pros, including Yushan, who's been on fire lately, and Gatorade, who recently took home the WPT main event. But y'all know I never back down from a challenge, so let's go. It's the first hand of the screen. It folds around a Josh who raises from the button, 300 bucks. I'm on a straddle with Ace King. Josh is an incredibly capable player, and I hate to play out of position to him, but I can't be afraid to bring the heat. I three bet him to 1.3K, and he calls. So we're heads up to the flop. The flop's 1072 rainbow. I have a strong range advantage and I should be doing a lot of betting, but I felt like Josh would bet a ton if he checked two. So my plan here is to check raise him and follow through on most turns, representing all of my over pairs. However, Josh checks it back. When a turn is the king of hearts, however, I decide to go for small value and evaluate river. I bet one third and Josh calls. The river is an eight of diamonds. While I wanted to bet, I had a feeling he was floating with a wide range and would fold to a river bet. So I decided to play my hand as a bluff catcher. We get to showdown and top pair is good. But here's a clip of my thoughts afterward. Man, I wonder if I miss out on value with the ace king, but in the moment, I think he has a lot of ace queen, ace jack, double flows, some jack nine suited, some queen jack, a ton of queen jack in his range, button versus big line. I wasn't sure what gets called by. You have to imagine like pocket nines, pocket eight, like all of the smaller pocket pairs, they don't make that call on the turn with two overs. And so I'm not sure if my feeling is right or not, but that's the reason why I checked river. I guess we'll find out what he has. Yep, it looks like my read was good good way to start the stream. Remember when I said Josh is a capable player? Get ready for round two. I'm in the low jack and I raise with pocket fours. Josh comes along from the big blind. We're heads up to a flop of 4-3-2 rainbow, a flop top set. Josh checks it over and I decide to continue for half pot. In hindsight, I actually think this is a mistake. Josh has a ton of air in his range and he's just going to overfold all of those cards. But if he connects with his board somehow, he's going to know that I shouldn't connect here all too often and he's going to apply pressure across multiple streets. I certainly don't want him to fold his air, and I'd rather him lead out on a turn with all of his bluffs. But anyway, I make the mistake, and he decides to bring the heat. He raises to 1.4k. I know he's capable, so I'm not going anywhere just yet. I put in a call. The turn is a six of clubs, completing the straight and bringing in a backdoor flush draw. At this point, all of his 5x bluffs get there, so I'm a bit annoyed. He continues on the turn for 2.4k. I have a disguise set, however, and if I hit one of my outs, we can possibly play for stacks. Besides, there's still a chance he's bluffing, so I put in a call. On a nine of clubs river, here's the action. Clubs, backdoor clubs get there. J1 has a club in his hand with the set. See if Josh continues to his story. All in. all in moment. Another punt to the all pro punt returner, J1, but with a flush out there and four to a straight. A little bit more difficult for J1 here. <clears throat> Do we still have the Grey Goose in there? We're on hand seven mm -hmm. people. Yeah, I think so. Get a little scotch. Seems like every stream somebody tries to punt to Jay Wynn. How will I let you guys Right on like, cue. This uh, is a big one. Yeah, that's unbelievable. Like, better late than never. Yeah. Where'd you guys And Jay Wynn looks to be leaning on the floor and lays it down. Huh? I'm good. Paradox! Quack, quack. There's too much that beats me here, and when all of his front and backdoor bluffs get there, I'm not able to find a call. So I fold. Nice play from Josh. Wow! Four to a straight out there, like flush out there, and an incredible story told by Josh. How'd you beat on the flop? How'd you beat on the flop? Did you? That's a lie. Wow. So after this hand, I'm back down to 2.4k. I did say this was going to be a battle, right? It falls to me in the hijack, raised to 250 with Ace King. Gator's on my left, and he pumps it up to 800. I know he has a more aggressive three betting range, so it's an easy four bet from me. 
And although he folds, this is a reminder that I have to expand my 4 betting range to combat these raises. Otherwise, I'm just going to be overfolding or playing passively out of position with decent hands like ace jack, king queen, and suited aces and connectors. In these games, you gotta fight aggression with aggression. I'm in middle position with ace queen off. I raise to 250 and get a call from Pierre. The action's on Jake, who 3 bets at a 1.3k. I don't like being sandwiched between two good players, but I also don't want to take a hand like ace queen and reopen the action, so I just make the call. Pierre calls behind me, which tells me he has a lot of smaller pairs and suited Broadway cards. But let's get to the flop. The flop's 984, two hearts. On this board against two others, Jake's gonna do a lot of checking, so no surprise when he does. The action's on me, so let's do some quick analysis. Jake has all of the big cards and the over pairs in his range. I unblock the hearts, so it's possible he's on a flush draw. Over to Pierre, who I have a ton of volume with. I know he's pure three betting his pocket nines and pocket eights, so I can remove his nut advantage. I decided that if I'm gonna steal this pot, I'll need to commit my full stack. With an effective SPR of three, we're most likely going all in on the river. So let's start the betting, like we would with all of our strong value hands. I bet half pot, 2.2k. Pierre folds, and Jake puts in a call. The turn's an offsuit 6, another good card for my range. I ask for a count and fire in a second barrel, for 4.1k this time. Jake thinks about it a little, but ends up folding, and I'm relieved to get the fold, though I didn't think I actually had the better hand. I'll take it anyway. It's only hand 30, and I am getting cards. When Chaz opens his low jack, I wake up with the best hand in poker. I raise him to 900. It folds back to Chaz, and he makes the call. Heads up to a flop. It's a disconnected board of jack 7 7, so when it's checked to me, I'm gonna start with a 30% bet. 600. He makes the call, so we're off to a turn. The turn isn't my favorite. It's the queen of clubs. When Chaz checks, I can either bet or check a back for pot control, as Chaz also has a number of nuttish hands in his range. Since it's a rainbow board and there are less draws to charge, I decide to do the former and to bluff catch any river lead. The river is a queen. When Chaz checks, I'm fairly certain he doesn't have any queen or seven. So I think this is a spot I can go for thin value. I bet 1.3k, targeting lesser two pairs that would have played it all the same way. Chaz thinks about it and puts in the call. I win a nice pot, moving me up on the cumulative winnings. But I do wonder if I'm playing my over pairs too conservatively. Let's take a look at GTO Wizard. So here's a hand in GTO Wizard. When Chaz checks it over on the flop, in real time, I use a small bet sizing. However, with my hand being so strong, I can actually get away with the medium and the large sizing. So key learning number one, go for large sizing. But let's say we went ahead and used a 50% sizing. Chaz makes the call. The next question I had was, what are our options when a queen of clubs hits the turn? Chaz, of course, checks in game. And so we're looking at our different options. With a hand like pocket aces, we never want to get check raised. And so that's the reason why we're going to want checks in our range. Not surprised that we're doing a lot of checking on turn with our full range, including aces. So pretty happy with that play. And then finally, on a queen of hearts river, once we're checked to for a third time, we're going to absolutely want to go for value. And I guess I was surprised how much we could go for. Looks like aces is going to want to use a medium or large sizing. In game, I use a third, but it looks like with aces, I'm going to want to use a lot of medium large sizing and if we get jammed on, we can fold. And that was pretty cool to see and just a reminder to keep the aggression on and try to maximize value with our best hands. With GTO Wizard, my studying has gotten a lot more efficient. Every single day, I'm able to look up one or two hands and think through the best ways to play them. If you guys want, follow the description below. Keep in mind, you get several lookups for free every single day. And if you want to set up an account, you do get 10% off the first month. All right, guys, let's get back to the hands. Close to Josh on a button. The stand-up game is still in effect, so I expect them to raise wider than usual. When I'm the only person left, I'm essentially calling range as well. I got 7-4 of diamonds, not the worst. At least the flop is decent. I get queen 6 3 2 diamonds for an ugly combo draw. I check, and Josh C bets 250. With two low cards, it's possible that Josh flopped a ton of air here. So I raise it a 1k, but it doesn't take long for him to call. On a king of clubs, I decided to slow down. Something didn't feel right, but the check was a blunder. I should actually be following up big. I check it over to Josh, but lucky for me, I get a free river, which is an offsuit 4. I now have a pair, and maybe I'm good sometimes. I check, and Josh checks it back. I get lucky on the river, and the four is good enough. Good chuck raise on the flop, but I really missed a turn follow through here. But that's why I like reviewing my hands. Pierre raises from early position. Draja calls, I call, and Gator closes the action. So we're four ways to the flop. The flop's 10, 7, 3, two hearts. I flop top pair, but I check to play and flow. And a flop checks through. The turn's a five of hearts, completing the flush. A gut straight also gets there. I've no reason to bet, so I check. Gator bets half pot, 1.2k. Pierre and Drogic folds. It's not a great spot for me, but I do think I need to call at least once. The river's a three, which shouldn't change anything. I check, and Gator gives up. Top pair is good. Although I was thinking about what I do on a river bet. 
What do you guys do here if he bets large? Let me know in the comments. The 200 straddle is on. It falls to me in a cutoff and I have ace king. I raise it to 500 and get a call from Jake. Josh wants to make it bigger though. He three bets at a 2.5K. I'm near the top of my range and there's a ton of dead money. So let's get after it. I four bet him to 5.5K. Jake folds and Josh puts in the call. There's 11.6K in the pot and a flop of ace queen jack to go with it. It's a monotone board. SPR is under two, so I need to be careful here. When he actions on me, I decide to check it back. The turn is a three of diamonds. Josh checks, and while I think it's okay to bet now, I'm still pretty cautious. We lose to a lot of hands here, and my goal is to still get to showdown as cheaply as possible. I check again. The river is an offsuit 10, giving me a straight. But on the river, Josh leads out for 2k. There's a ton he can get value from if he had a flush, so I don't think he ever uses small sizing. It feels like a blocker bet. I think calling is fine, but maybe I get two pair and sets to call. I raise it a 7.5k. Josh thinks about it, but eventually folds. And I take down the third hand in this orbit. I'm heating up. The game is going pretty good. I think we're up a couple of stacks, like maybe 20 more or less. Yeah, man, just really playing strong fundamental ranges, sticking to our game plan, not deviating much at all, really. I haven't had any super tough spots. I think we only made one big notable mistake, but other than that, I'm pretty happy with how we're playing. So just trying to keep up that pace. And uh, it's a tough crowd, so just trying to pay attention to every little bit of uh, information that we can get on each hand. It folds to me in a cutoff, and I raise to 500. Jake and Josh closes the action. We're going three ways to the flop. The flop's queen four three rainbow. It gets checked to me, but without any pair or good draw, I don't think it's worth firing, so I check it back. On a jack of clubs turn, it gets checked to me again. Nothing's really changed, however, and sometimes my ace is good. So once more, I check it back. The river's a nine of clubs, bringing in some straights and a backdoor flush. This time, Jake leads out for 425. It's a good price, and I snap it off with my one pair, and it's good. Gonna have to come with more heat than that, Jake. Gator raises from early position, $250. It folds all the way back to me in the straddle, and I call with queen three suited. The flop's ace five two rainbow. I have a gut draw and a backdoor nut flush. So when Gator bets 100, it's an easy call. Off to a turn, which is a jack of clubs. I check, and Gator once again puts in a small bet, 125. It's a really small bet and I'm tempted to just go for it, but from early position, Gator has a ton of aces, and there's a chance he could be inducing some action. But for 125, what the heck? Let's see what we get. I make the call. And look what comes on the river. The magical four giving me a straight. I think about the turn bet, and I'm afraid that Gator checks back way too often on this river. So I decide to bet for value. I go with a 70% sizing. I shouldn't have many threes in my range, so I'm hoping he looks me up light. But after some thought, he finds a fold. Maybe the bet was too big here, but my thinking was I needed a size for my bluffs too. Anyway, good fold Gator. Last hand of the stream, and it's a big one. Yushan raises his hijack to 250. It falls to me in a big blind and I wake up with aces. I've ran good so far, so please have something to call with Yushan. I three bet him to 1.2K. Gator folds and is back on Yushan who puts in a call. Heads up. The flop's pretty good. Jack 7-3, two diamonds. Considering he has a lot of one pair combinations here, I'd like to start building the pot. I bet 1.2K. When it's on Yushan, I can tell his gears are turning. He actually raises it to 2.4, a fairly small raise. Though I'm fairly sure I'm good, unfortunately I can't 3-bet him here as I force his weak hands to fold and I really don't want to run up against his value range. So I make the call, proceeding with caution. The turn is a 2 of hearts. I check, and Yushan fires again for 2 thirds pot, 5k. And once again, I call. The river is a 3 of spades, which I actually think is a good card. Some of his bluffs on the flop includes 2 diamonds and some suited connectors that make a gut draw. With all draws bricking and the river 3 making the set of 3s less likely, I feel like my aces are going to be good here a ton. I'm prepared to pay him off. But after checking to him, he decided to give up. And I win a big 17k pot. One more huge hand to report. Unfortunately, this is after hours, so I wasn't able to get the footage. But hopefully I can recall the hand as best as I can. Low jack raises to 300. I'm on the button with queens, queen of spades, queen of heart. We bump it up to 900. He makes the call, pots around 2k. The flop is 982, two spades. He checks, we play pot control, and look to play a two street game. The turn is an offsuit four. He checks, we check it again. And finally, the river is a two of spades completing the front door flush. He checks, this time we go for value. We can get value from jacks, tens, sevens, sixes, for example. So there's quite a few pairs that we can get value from. Maybe some ten nines as well. We bet 800, so pretty small bet. And then he pops it up to 3K. 
we think about it a little bit and if we didn't have the queen of spades i think there's a higher likelihood of us folding ace king is a hand that he would four bet us with so that leaves us with king jack king 10 ace 10 ace jack those hands seem more reasonable but he's also a full-time player so you know sometimes if we're blocking some of his best hands we just gotta calm down so we make the call expecting to lose some of the time but we get the win so with that we get another big pot and i think we actually had our best session ever i don't want to count the chips right now i'll put it up in one of the corners but i think it's 30 something which is uh, officially our best game ever yeah so that, <laughs> so that's uh, pr something to be proud about but we're about to rack up and show the victory it's been a pretty rough uh, 30 day period for us but uh, the last seven or eight games have been really really good so hopefully you guys enjoyed the vlog hopefully you guys enjoyed the analysis don't forget to comment like subscribe i will see you guys next time peace